Hello again, my dear viewers. Today is March 30th, and here's today's daily summary of events on the front lines. And before I get to it, I want to explain some of the nuances. I think you've noticed that not only I, but also other sources have had much less operational information lately about the movement of troops, information on where, who is advancing and who has occupied what. And this is due in part to the fact that, for example, the press service of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation has drastically changed its policy in recent weeks. Nothing has been said about the advancement of Russian troops over the last week, but this does not mean that there is no advancement at all. To give you just one example, the Russian Ministry of Defense, for example, did not say that Russian troops had taken control of the village of Kamenka, south of Izium, or Sukhaya Kamenka, which is even further south than Kamenka itself in the direction of Slavyansk. Nevertheless, if we look carefully at the penultimate report of the airfew for 00 o'clock this morning, we see that Russian troops, according to the airfew general staff, have already taken these settlements. I base my data not only on the data of the general staff of the AFU, which in my opinion and experience traditionally lacks by a couple of days, sometimes by a couple of days, sometimes by three days, and because the audience writes to me, and in fact it's the most powerful information resource today which allows you to understand the situation in general, and according to the data they've supplied me with, the front today in Kramatorsk is just south of the border of Kharkiv and Donetsk regions. There was shelling of Hrestisha, but the Russian army is not going any further yet. There came an operational pause, as the airfew general staff correctly stated, the Russian troops having achieved serious success at protecting their rear, regrouping and preparing for the next strike, that is, on the whole, the task of initially establishing a bridgehead for a further strike bypassing the Slavyansk and Kramatorsk grouping has been accomplished by the Russian troops in this area. And now we should expect a very powerful, serious blow to bypass Slavyansk and Kramatorsk and to meet the troops that are attacking from the Horlivka area right now. You know, today Horlivka residents wrote to me, Yuri, you know, I woke up, I'm a person used to shelling, but I woke up to terrible cannonade. The ground is shaking, they're firing from all calibers, self-prepared artillery, multiple rocket launchers, all flying in the direction between New York and Avdeevka, the place where the Russian forces and the troops of the Donetsk People's Republic are trying to break through the front line of the Air Fuse 95th Brigade. And it seems that that is where the two Iskandars came from tonight or this morning, which indicates that this direction is considered a priority for the Russian command today. So, breaking through that line of defense, it is a priority. And a quick breakthrough of this front line, or the remaining parts of the front line with an appropriate strike from Izium, it immediately threatens to encircle and further defeat the Slovansk, Kramatorsk and Lysychansk grouping of the Ukrainian armed forces. A huge cauldron which will be further destroyed. We, accordingly, further defeat in this area will lead to the next offensive operation to encircle the Avdeevsko Donetsko group of the AFU with access to the area of Pokrovsk from Huliapol and, accordingly, Izium. That is, this most powerful strategic offensive operation in the east of Ukraine has already begun this morning in the Holivka direction, and this is, in fact, the most important news on the front line at the moment. All the other pieces of news are somewhat secondary in nature. Let us run through them briefly. There's fighting in the north of the Kherson region the Krivi regrouping of the air few, taking advantage of the fact that some forces have been withdrawn and transferred to the Zaporizhia direction, is trying to move south and has taken control of several settlements, but in general it is not yet considered alarming. 
Russian troops are keeping the AFU units near the Mykolaiv fortified area under serious fire control. They are conducting constant missile strikes against it, and those units that move somewhere and appear in the sights of Russian drones, they are subjected to corresponding artillery and aviation strikes. That is, the situation here looks something like this. Near Kiev and Cherniev, fighting has also become less tense in general. Near Kiev it has subsided, near Cherniev it has not. The activity of the Ukrainian armed forces in the south of Sumy region is noticeable, and the nature of the movement of the Ukrainian armed forces in this area suggests that Kiev is preparing a deep blocking strike in the direction of Cherniev. Also tonight, there was further shelling of Belgorod Oblast territory from long-range multiple rocket launches, which is now a commonplace experience for civilians in Belgorod Oblast. A few more words about the Zaporizhia direction. I also noted one interesting detail. If a few days ago in the area of Huliapil in general, the leadership of the AFU, so to speak, showed a certain optimism, even tried to attack some settlements. Then for the second day, they say that the Russian troops are constantly shelling the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine and undertake local counter-attacks. In other words, all this suggests that the situation here for the AFU is gradually beginning to deteriorate, which is also understandable, because from this very area to the east, a new powerful strike is being prepared to encircle the southern parts of the Donbass front. This is what I can tell you. It is now approximately 12 o'clock in Moscow, uh, March 30th. I plan to do the next military review late tonight, but before that I plan to do another very important piece. That's all for now.